Today on Lab Bench, we're going to find out about MPEG-H. So we're going to go to the experts. So what is MPEG-H? Yes, so MPEG-H, uh, or MPEG-H audio to be specific, is a new standard developed by the MPEG organization that uh, develops audio and video standards. It's a part of ISO. And it's a uh, next generation audio system that is a uh, the next step beyond, say, the AAC family of codecs that MPEG has developed over the years. Uh, the AAC family provides about half of the world's TV audio today, and we're hoping that the MPEG H standard will be adopted by standards bodies such as uh, ATSC or DVB in Europe uh, and will be used for future television audio systems. And where will MPEG H be used in terms of devices? Uh, it would be used in television sets, uh, audio-video receivers, uh, tablet computers, laptops, mobile phones, basically any device that can receive uh, either over-the-air broadcast TV, cable or satellite TV, or uh, what, what's termed over-the-top delivery, uh, subscription services delivered over the Internet. What are the advantages of using MPEG-H? We're going to bring interactivity to consumers to allow them to uh, adjust the announcer up or down if they need to have more volume for more intelligibility. Um, we will also uh, provide additional audio elements to the viewer that we couldn't really broadcast today because you know today's broadcast is to a mass audience and has to be a compromise mix of things. For example, uh, in our demonstrations we've shown people the ability to listen in on uh, one of the driver to pick crew radios at a NASCAR race, or to be able to pick uh, a home or away team announcer at a football game. And additionally, we'll be able to support more languages with MPEG-H. So today we basically have English and sometimes uh, Spanish as a second language. We can do three or four languages on a TV broadcast with no problem, and we'll support uh, visual description for the uh, visually impaired as well. So that's one new feature. The other is uh, MPEG-H will offer immersive sound, which is a real improvement, uh, almost as much of a step beyond surround sound as surround sound was beyond stereo. It's realistic enough that a viewer can feel like he's really in the audience at the event as opposed to being a viewer at home. And then the third thing is uh, for over-the-air TV, it's basically been confined to the living room. Uh, but with the MPEG-H standard, we'll be able to deliver the audio in the best possible quality, not only to living room TVs, but to mobile, uh, mobile phones, tablet computers, uh, a range of other devices. So it will really be universal delivery. Will MPEG-H require more bandwidth? No, uh, in fact, it's twice as efficient as the current system we use for TV audio in the U.S. So uh, we'll be able to save that bandwidth and, and maybe uh, spend a little bit of it on these additional uh, audio elements that we'll use for personalized broadcasts. But uh, uh, in summary, it will be a savings over what broadcasters are using today. Are there any competing standards? Uh, yes. Uh, so here at the ATSC committee meetings uh, in Atlanta, uh, the initial reports of studies uh, are being presented that have uh, compared or evaluated uh, the MPEG-H Audio Alliance's TV audio system based on MPEG-H to uh, Dolby's AC4 proposal. And uh, in fact, tomorrow there will be uh, a meeting to uh, perhaps try to bring that to an initial conclusion as to whether both of those standards or one will be selected for the next generation of American TV standards. So how soon will MPEG-H be available? Well, it will depend not only on how quickly we develop the audio codec because uh, we're using it live uh, on the air in these simulated broadcasts now, though there's still always more testing and development to be done. But more strongly, it will depend on the integration of all the other elements of the ATSC 3.0 system, which also has a new video codec, a new transport layer, new application engine, um, new physical RF layer. So all these components will have to be integrated together. The ATSC estimates 
uh, that by uh, 2016, perhaps the end of 2016, they would have uh, new TVs available for consumers to purchase, at, at least the very first ones. And of course, we'll, we'll always see uh, uh, earlier adoption over, uh, over the top internet channels, since that can be done through software upgrades. Thank you very much. And if you'd like to find out more about MPEG-H, check out the links to the side.